Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Amber Rose, also known as The Religious Hippie. You can basically follow me on any social media platform or you can go straight to my website at thereligioushippie.com. So today we're gonna to be talking about consecrations. I get a lot of questions about consecrations, what they are, how to do them, the different types that are out there. So we're gonna cover all of that in today's video. But first, I just wanna say, if you enjoy the videos and you like what I'm doing with my ministry, please consider donating on my website because through your contribution, I am able to to keep this ministry running and it truly means so much to me. Every little bit counts and I truly do appreciate all of those who have donated and will donate in the future. But if you can't donate, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. That will also help a lot. With all that being said, let's get into the video. Consecration means to make holy and it's a great way to strive for sainthood. Saint Louis de Montfort said that marrying consecration, that is consecrating ourselves to Jesus through Mary, is the surest, easiest, shortest, and most perfect means to becoming a saint. As mentioned earlier, consecration means to make something holy. When an individual performs an act of consecration, it is ultimately an offering to God, recognizing that the act is a solemn pledge to respond faithfully to the grace of God working in their lives. There are many different types of consecration, but the most popular one is Marian consecration. As I stated earlier, this is when we consecrate ourselves to Jesus through Mary. Saint Pope John Paul Paul II once said this about Mary and consecration. Consecrating ourselves to Mary means accepting her help to offer ourselves and the whole of mankind to him who is holy, infinitely holy. It means accepting her help by having recourse to her motherly heart, which beneath the cross was opened to love for every human being, for the whole world, in order to offer the world, the individual human being, mankind as a whole, and all the nations to him who is infinitely holy. So let's say you have a great relationship with Our Lady. You pray the rosary daily or often enough. You constantly ask for her intercession. And overall, you just formed a wonderful relationship with her. Well, the next step would be consecration. But let's say maybe you don't have that great of a relationship with her. Maybe you're a convert. Maybe you struggle with Our Lady or women in general. This could be a great relationship starter. By consecrating ourselves to Our Lady, we're entrusting her with our lives, our prayers, our loved ones, our works, and our merits. We entrust Our Lady with everything we have and in return she will take what we have and multiply it. Our Lady will also take our prayers and sacrifices, penance, and she'll take them and put them towards things or people who she knows needs them the most. For example, let's say little Timmy's sick and we don't know that our nephew, little Timmy, is sick, but Our Lady does and so she will take our prayers and our offerings and put them towards little Timmy because he needs our prayers, but we aren't aware of it. And so she'll do things like that because we are giving her control of our merits, our prayers, our sufferings, etc. Because Our Lady is in heaven and she is the mother of Jesus, she has a stronger relationship and so we can ask for her intercession and her prayers will be more powerful than ours will be. All Our Lady wants to do is bring us closer to her son, Jesus. And just like the moon reflects the light of the sun, Our Lady reflects the light of her son. Through Our Lady, we can deepen our love and devotion to Jesus. Okay, with all of that out of the way, if you're interested in consecrating yourself, to Jesus through Mary, here are some things that you can do to get started. So for beginners, the first consecration I always suggest that they do is the 33 Days to Morning Glory Consecration by Michael E. Gately. This is one of the most well-known and loved consecrations in Catholicism. I've also linked this book below for anyone who's interested in it. You can find it on Tan Books, Amazon, Barnes & Noble. I left all those links below for you guys. So if you want to buy it, you can just go to the description. If you want a more difficult consecration, the 33 Days of Morning Glory is more of a breakdown of the true devotion to Mary by Saint Louis de Montfort. Now, when you get a consecration, usually the 33 day consecrations, there's 33 days to morning glory, 33 days to greater love, and 33 days to merciful love. I think there's more, but those are the three that I'm familiar with. So in the table of contents in the beginning, there will be a list of dates to start the consecration. And although it doesn't always start on a feast day that corresponds with the consecration, it always ends on a feast, bit, feast day that corresponds with the consecration. So let's say that you're doing a St. Joseph consecration. There will be a bunch of feast days that correspond with St. Joseph. For example, St. Joseph the Worker. You would end the consecration on the feast day of St. Joseph the Worker, 
but you would work your way up 33 days. So once you've picked a date, I would highly suggest you get some friends and you guys start some kind of consecration group together. This isn't required, you can do it by yourself, but I've personally always enjoyed doing it with other people and it offers community and support. I know at my church, we have every single year a Marian consecration group where a bunch of people sign up, we all get together, we get the book. Basically, we meet regularly and we have community and we go over the readings and talk about it. There's even a workbook that you can buy, which I will also link below for you guys. I've personally never used it, but people who have been running groups or are a part of the group have found the workbook to be very helpful. Once you've figured out whether you wanna do it alone or with a group and you have all of that figured out, you you can then start doing the daily readings when the start date rolls around. These daily readings are usually pretty short, they're usually around two to three pages long, and there's a little prayer at the bottom that helps you reflect on the reading and prepare for the day. Now, I say prepare for the day because I usually do my consecrations in the morning, but if you do them at night, that's totally fine too. And then basically you just do the readings every single day until consecration day. I do wanna say if you fall behind, it's okay, just catch up again. You don't have to start it all over again, unless you have to read like the entire book, then I would suggest waiting till the next consecration day. But you can catch up in case you do fall behind because it happens a lot, trust me, it's okay. When consecration day does roll around, there is a prayer that you say, which is the consecration itself. And I want to say specifically that really all consecration is, is entrusting yourself to Jesus through the intercession of a saint or our lady or Saint Joseph, etc. But the consecration books are not necessary to do the consecration. There's tons of consecrations that don't have a book to go with them, such as the Sacred Heart Consecration, Guardian Angel Consecration, etc. However, if you want a deeper spiritual experience, the books are very helpful to give you that background and kind of learn more about the saint uh, that you're doing the consecration with or just more information in general. Very helpful. But you do not need the books to do a consecration. They're just helpful. So then again, once consecration day rolls around, I would suggest going to your local parish. You don't have to do this. You could do the consecration in your own room in the comfort of your own home but I would highly suggest going to your church and doing it in front of a statue of that saint or our lady, um, the blessed sacrament. So Max and I, we consecrated our relationship to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and to Saint Joseph. And we did it at the Saint Joseph altar at Saint John Cantius. So I highly suggest doing that just because it makes the day a little bit more special. After you've read the consecration prayer and you've consecrated yourself to Jesus through our lady, Saint Joseph, whoever you decide. Once your consecration day has passed, you can then consecrate yourself every single day. And they have shortened consecration prayers, so you don't have to read the really long one every single day. Uh, but that's something that might be important to you and you want to read the long one every day. Uh, but other than that, they do have shortened ones and people usually renew their consecrations yearly. I just wanted to say for those of you who are just starting to get into consecrations and things of that nature, I didn't know this back in 2019 when I did my first Marian consecration, but a priest told me that Satan will literally do anything he can to keep you from doing the consecration because he knows how powerful a consecration is. So in those instances, you might experience a lot of temptation and spiritual warfare, but it might even be really subtle. For example, subtle spiritual warfare might look like not feeling like doing your consecration today, not being motivated to pray, putting non-priorities above the consecration so you fall behind and then you decide just to fall off the bandwagon altogether. Whereas extreme spiritual warfare might look more like feeling desolation and loneliness. You might even feel burnout at times. There could be other things, but just be aware that Satan hates Our Lady and he hates God. And he hates and he hates you. You can use whichever one you want. And he will try and do anything he can to keep you from growing in a deeper relationship with God and Our Lady. And he'll do anything he can to pull you off of that path of sainthood. So just stay strong, stick with it, go to confession. Why did I say that? Go to confession anyways, guys. It's important. I don't know why I said it, but Holy Spirit was like, say it, because somebody needs to hear it. Just stay vigilant, stay strong, pray through it and persevere. It's going to be hard because Satan doesn't want you to have that relationship with God and he knows how powerful consecrations are, but just stick with it because it's really beneficial. And with all of that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on consecrations. Comment below what your favorite consecrations are and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye!
Spooky, scary skeletons and chills down your spine. <laughs>